everybody, Brian Newbert here again from goldenblack.com, live in the old home office. This is where the magic happens, um, as they said in Wayne's World. Um, this is your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast for Thursday, April 23rd. It is brought to you by our friends at Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remaxability Plus. I want to remind you once again, if you're looking for damn good food uh, for dinner or whatever meal you might be uh, looking forward to, uh, or to support our local businesses, preferably both, please keep in mind um, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, uh, Bruno's in West Lafayette, Arnie's in West Lafayette, and many, many other locations, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette, all of them remain open for carryout orders. If you're looking for a house, go buy one from the Charters team, too. Please, just go buy a house uh, right now, but please keep all of our sponsors in mind uh, during this obviously difficult time. If you're new to the show, this is our daily little Purdue conversation piece we're putting up at goldenblack.com on our social media channels, on our multimedia channels, including our Golden Black Radio podcast platform, just to try to help you get through uh, quarantine with a little bit more of your sanity or take away a little bit of your sanity, depending on your viewpoint or your opinion of me. Um, I want to remind you also, if you're accessing this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, when the world starts spinning again, we will have a lot of Purdue stuff on there that you'll want to get access to. So please be sure to hit that little subscribe button. I'm not tech savvy enough, like some of the uh, some of the bloggers are, to put the little subscribe button on the video uh, monitor. But please subscribe to our channel if you're so inclined. Today's topic, obviously, is a relevant one. Uh, obviously, the NFL draft begins tonight. Figured... What better time to talk about the NFL draft than the night the NFL draft starts? And the NFL draft will be conducted much like this is. It will be a bunch of people in front of a computer relying desperately on their IT people to keep them online and desperately trying to not mess up badly. I, I for one, as a Jets fan, am particularly eager for when the Jets actually draft, draft Jeeves tonight, which will almost certainly happen, in which case Jeeves' career will be over uh, in the NFL um, obviously, Purdue has a vested interest in the NFL draft, as it so often does. Last year brought to a close a 21-year streak of Purdue having a player drafted, at least one player drafted. Obviously, a very impressive streak for a program that has never been Alabama or Michigan or Ohio State in terms of turning out NFL people, but has had an inordinate number of players go on to have really good NFL careers and has had a lot of players drafted. Um a new streak almost certainly starts tonight or sometime this weekend. Marcus Bailey, uh, the linebacker who missed most of this past season with an ACL injury, to me, will get drafted. Uh, Bryson Hopkins, the tight end, will get drafted. Uh, whether it's it might not be tonight, it might be at some point during the weekend, but I think by the end of the weekend, both of those guys will have heard their names called or at least e-called, however, um, however you want to define an NFL team putting their little cursor over a player and drafting him. Um, just to talk a little bit about both of those guys, I think Marcus Bailey would have had an outstanding, outstanding college career as opposed to just a very good one, had injuries not obviously held him back. Uh, that obviously, I'm sure that's a big question for people around him, making sure he's healthy after the ACL injury. I think assuming everything's fine there, which every indication has been it is, I think he could – he could be a really, really high value sort of guy because if people overlook him a little bit because of the injury, maybe he's not front top of mind for people because he didn't have the chance to have the sort of season he wanted to have. I think he could really be a, a high value sort of pick because I think, A, he's a really good player, but also I think he's a really complete linebacker. And in, in the NFL nowadays, obviously you have to be able to fill gaps between tackles, whatever else, but it's also a much more open game than it used to be. You have to be able to cover in space, ideally, at linebacker. If you're not an absolutely special physical force at the line of scrimmage, um, you have to be able to do a lot of different things. And I I think Marcus Bailey is well-suited uh, to do a lot of different things. I think he's a guy who can be an effective blitzer. I think he's physical enough to do what you need at linebacker, but he's also mobile enough and savvy enough and good enough in coverage uh, to wear a lot of hats, or in this case, I guess, wear a lot of helmets. Um as a linebacker, and I think that's critically important nowadays in today's NFL where you you got to cover the pass. It is a passing league nowadays. You have to be good against the pass. You have to get after the quarterback, but you have to be good in coverage. And I think Marcus Bailey can give you a little bit of a lot of things 
whereas he may not necessarily be a game changer in any one area. I think he's a really complete linebacker and a really, really devastating loss for Purdue this past season, not having him after he came back this year when he could have gone in the draft last year. You hate to see that when a, a guy has a chance to go, comes back because he wants to do a little bit more in college and then he gets hurt. Just, just a really unfortunate story, but a story that could have a very happy ending uh, at some point this weekend. Not that it's an ending, uh, but it's a next chapter, shall we say. Bryson Hopkins, uh, also, again, today's NFL. You know, I don't think anybody's drafting Bryson Hopkins, expecting him to line up over a defensive end and dominate that player as an inline blocker. I think they're drafting him as a guy you can split out, who can create matchups against linebackers, go down the field. And when you look at the players who have dominated at the tight end position over the years, Jimmy Graham comes to mind, obviously, during his stint with Drew Brees in New Orleans. But nowadays, uh, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, and so on, just that is a position that has been redefined in the NFL over the last decade or so. Just guys who are physical forces, guys who are really atypical athletes for their size, their height, their, their reach, whatever it may be. And I think Hopkins, not to say he's going to come in the league and be George Kittle or Travis Kelsey or Jimmy Graham, but I think he's more of that then he would be the opposite. And I think the things people are going to draft him for are the things he's the things he's good at and the things that are going to get him drafted are the things that line up ideally with today's NFL uh, at the tight end position. The tight end position, again, is completely di different than it was 15 to 20 years ago. And uh, in that sense, Bryson Hopkins is coming along at the right time. Uh, Purdue has some free agent guys, too, who I'm sure will end up on, uh, you know, with some opportunities, be it be it Matt McCann or or whoever else. But Purdue is going to start another draft streak this year. I'm quite certain whether this one goes 21 years, I don't know. Um, but last year's shutout will be quickly uh, revealed to be a blip, a aberration, because Purdue is going to be more and more relevant on NFL draft weekends from here on out um, than or as relevant at least than it, it has been in quite some time because, uh, you know, next year you're sitting here, you're looking at obviously Rondell Moore is going to have a decision to make. Um, obviously a guy who is well suited, you know, for the NFL is going to be, is going to be relatively physically prepared, has had his mind on the NFL for quite some time. That is his goal. Um, He's going to have a decision to make clearly uh, what he ends up doing. Obviously, it would be too early for us to uh, to speculate, but I think it would be a reasonable thing to say to suggest that Purdue might want to enjoy its time this year with Rondell Moore because its time may be running out. Beyond him, obviously, I think you have a bunch of other guys here. Uh, Lorenzo Neal, obviously, uh, is a guy who has been on the NFL's radar here for quite a while, is going to have this next chance for a senior year. Next year, he will be very much on people's radars this year. Anthony Watts, I think, is another guy who is going to get a long look. Uh, Grant Herman's on the offensive line, you know, perhaps hasn't been that dominant college offensive lineman to this point in his career, but has a lot going for him, much the way Dennis Kelly did. Um and obviously, Dennis Kelly has gone on to have a, a pretty productive, pretty long, um, extended NFL career. And longevity in the NFL is a really, really hard thing to come by. I think Grant Hermans has a lot going for him as a prospect. Wouldn't surprise me at all if he's drafted next year. He, at the very least, he will get an opportunity with somebody. Somebody who's going to be interesting to watch is, is Derek Barnes. I think that, um, you know, I think he did some really positive things as an edge rusher last year. Pass rushing nowadays is so important uh, in football at all levels. But if he's going to play this season, if Purdue's going to do this 3-4 thing wholesale, it's going to be their thing. And Derek Barnes is really going to be one of their inside linebackers. That's going to give him an opportunity to do some different things, show he can play standing up, perhaps show some of the things he struggled with earlier in his career, where ideally he's a linebacker at the next level, uh, that he can do those things. Um, somebody might just... He is a physical specimen, too. Somebody might just look at him and say, hey, let's take a look at this guy. Let's get him in our camp, whatever it may be, and let's figure it out. Because if he plays inside linebacker this year, he will have gone from playing in the span of three years, basically three different positions. He started his first year on the field 
as an outside linebacker, then moved to that Leo position, which is essentially became a defensive end. And then if he's an inside 3-4 linebacker this year, that will be three years at three very different positions. Somebody could look at him and say, hey, he's got a lot of things that translate to a lot of different roles. Let's get him in here and see what he can do. Uh, so I would keep an eye on him, too. But he's got to have a good year, uh, too. And uh, I'm, I'm, I would be confident in saying he will. Um, but obviously, I don't know necessarily what kind of role he's going to play. After that, obviously, you know, things are going to really, really heat up for Purdue uh, with the NFL draft uh, because this year's freshman class is full, or this year's, f the, the freshman class that played this past season is full of guys who are going to be on NFL radar. George Karloftis and David Bell obviously, you know, top that list. I, I think it's safe to say that we can safely project that after those guys' junior years at Purdue, they could have decision decisions to make as well. Both of those guys are, are going to be elite college players, most likely. Uh, both of them have some real redeeming qualities as NFL prospects. Probably Karloff, this may be a little bit more than Bell. I, I think both are going to be really good prospects. Uh, but I think Karloff, this is damn near um, the prototype for what you're looking for uh, in terms of an edge player defensively. Last year was really the year um, where the, in, the upped recruiting – Jeff Brom and his staff and all that go into those efforts. Um, it really jumped out to the eye test because last year, suddenly the bodies just really changed. All of a sudden you got King Daru walking in the door. You got Jalen Graham, Marvin Grant, uh, the two freshman tight ends, Milton Wright. These are guys who look like players. The bodies just changed. This looked like almost like an SEC type of recruiting class. And anytime you get to that level of recruiting, it could be anybody who just all of a sudden develops, blows up. If he's already physically equipped, you could be an NFL prospect like that. And I think there's guys on here. Cam Allen in a couple of years might be a legitimate NFL guy. Jalen Graham might, is going to be an NF, uh, a legitimate NFL guy, provided he goes on to be a, a more productive college player than he probably was a little bit as a true freshman. But he was a, a true freshman. Same can be said for Milton Wright, who is what we call in the industry, this is a very te technical term, a grown-ass man. King Daru, uh, obviously the, the running back fray in the NFL these days is, is a complicated uh, thing, but he looks the part. That is a guy who could very much have a great career at Purdue here these next couple of years and could be on, on NFL radar. Kyle Billadeau and Garrett Miller, the two freshman tight ends, both of those guys straight out of central casting. Uh, in terms of in terms of the tight end position, both guys, first and man off the bus types of bodies with really good athleticism, really good ball skills. Again, what you're looking for at that position. So moving forward, I would be very surprised if what happens this weekend isn't the start of another really prominent run uh, for Purdue in the NFL draft. As long as Jeff Brom and his staff are here and they're recruiting at the level they're at, recruiting at right now, Purdue is going to become much more relevant in the NFL draft than they've been probably the five or six years when Purdue was just kind of skating by on the streak. It was, you didn't necessarily have a lot of guys you knew were getting drafted, but somebody would get picked up in the later rounds and just keep the streak alive. Now I think it, it's going to be a deal where you go into a lot of seasons saying, hey, here's four or five guys on this roster that, you know, NFL people are going to be passing through West Lafayette specifically to get a look at it. That's just kind of the nature of where Purdue is in recruiting right now. That's obviously a very positive thing. So this weekend, it's all about Marcus Bailey, Bryson Hopkins, and Bryson Hopkins, most notably. After that, there's going to be a lot of guys next year. And after that, there's going to be a lot of guys after that. So that's kind of where Purdue is with the NFL draft, both this weekend and long term. So that's what I got. I try to keep this thing under 15 minutes. I'm at 1401 right now. So this has been your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast about the NFL draft, which starts tonight. Um, we'll have full coverage on our website, obviously at goldenblack.com. So please stay tuned to that. We'll have hopefully interviews with both guys who get drafted. A look ahead to next year's draft on the site next week. Everything you could possibly want about the NFL draft from a Purdue perspective, we will have at goldenblack.com. So this has been brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, 6th Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. If you want damn good food for dinner or you just want to support our local businesses, please keep in mind um, 6th Street Dive in Lafayette, 
Uh, Bruno's in West Lafayette, Arnie's in West Lafayette, and all kinds of other locations, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette all remain open for care orders. You can also call the Charters team and go buy a house right now, too, if you're so inclined. Uh, but please keep all of them in mind. Uh, that's what I got. We'll talk to you guys again Monday. Thanks.